I'm gonna say one Dutch word first. Overdonderd. <laughs> Not a little, but a lot. It's incredible to be here, and it's incredible to see you, everybody here. And um, when we started this project one and a half years ago, I was hoping it was gonna work. I was hoping the DJs would support me, the organization would support me, and they did in such a way that I'm. I feel very humble. It is incredible that people show support. DJs, their most precious thing is time. And when you sit down at Hartwell's kitchen table, or Mike's kitchen table, where he's making snacks, bringing out wine, and talking for one half, two hours, and really opening up and putting their, their um, hands behind it, that is something very worthwhile. And that's something I'm very, very proud of and very grateful mostly. I remember, I think it's about two weeks ago, I went into a place where our shipping is, and uh, we saw a stack of books, and it was, it was books, my name on it. I said, you want to receive the real stack? Yes, I want to see the real stack. And five minutes later, I am looking at 25,000 kilos of dead trees with my name on it. <laughs> I thought, oh my god, what did I do? <laughs> but it's here, and it's just incredible. And this book is made out of love. I, I am very, and most people that know me know I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about photography, and I'm very passionate about dance music, because I live a very privileged, privileged life. I am surrounded by happy people. I am surrounded by happy DJs. If I don't look out, there's fireworks in my neck, there might be confetti in my nose, and people are ecstatic, and there's music play that I love so much. And I remember 20 years ago, when I was a skateboarder, snowboarder, and when I started for Stroke Magazine, I actually wanted to work for the snowboard magazine they had. But the Gabber came with it, figured why not? So I'd come to this Gabber party, in my skateboard clothes, pants this big, shirts that great, People look at me, what is he doing here? And now 20 years later, I fly all across the globe, and it is just incredible. I would like to thank everybody. Actually, Arne thanked everybody already. So I want to thank Arne, because I don't think this book would have been made possible without him, with his knowledge, and with his knowledge of knowing the right people that could help it and support it. This book wouldn't be here. But most of all, I would like to thank my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does get lonely, and it is a lonely job. And it is being away from home a lot of the times. Being away from home from Sasha and Luke. Sasha, <laughs> yeah. But in the end, it is still worthwhile, because when I'm home, I'm really at home. And it's a, it's a trade-off, but it's a trade-off. I am so happy we're making it, and it's just incredible. And on that note, I have no, no nothing else to say. I can, I'm really, really overwhelmed. And I would like to ask uh, Armin to come on stage and uh, receive the first book. This party's about this guy. And I'm very lucky to just receive the very first copy of his beautiful book. I mean, um, I'm very proud of this. He asked me to do the foreword uh, for this book. And uh, when he asked me, I, I knew that that was going to be a big task because a lot of people look up to you. Uh, and I'm deeply honored that you asked me. I, I want to uh, read a little bit from the foreword for the people that haven't seen it already. My parents told me all about the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and how they influenced the sound and the culture and the way of thinking in the 60s. Their music changed the world forever. Flower power, remember? 
An entire generation grew up listening to that music. A lot of people, young and old, are still listening to it. And some of them are the CEOs and the politicians of today. And only in retrospect we'll be able to look back on the year 2015 and see, that, see the impact that the current music and culture has had on the future. But I believe this era, era already shows every sign of another cultural milestone. That's the reason why you're here. You are here because you love dance music. Because you make your money with dance music or you simply are addicted to dance music. And you know, I'm a very lucky guy to, to be traveling the world and to be the center of attention all the time as a DJ, standing in, on stage, you see all those people going absolutely crazy. And, um, you know, it's, it's so overwhelming sometimes when you play for 70,000 people. And a lot of people ask me in interviews, I mean, you can't even comprehend. And especially now, you know, we all see that the Amsterdam Dance event has grown into something massive. And it makes me proud to be Dutch as well. Um, but, you know, you, you don't really realize what you're doing when you're standing on stage. I go into cloud nine as soon as I'm up there, and I always see him smiling behind me with his camera, <laughs> sneaking and making pictures. But then the, there's the next morning, and I wake up, and the first thing I do is I grab my phone, and I check my email, and there's always this little email from Rutger, that he literally posted, he got... I mean, he, this guy was on stage for 12 hours, I was only there for 2 hours, he was there for 12 hours, right? And I check it, and there's this beautiful picture that comes up. It shows on my phone. Oh wait, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. Twelve pictures he sent me of my performance last night. And only then, only then, I realized what the hell I'd done the night before. And what a lucky motherfucker I am. To be and the reason why I say this is because of this. Time goes so fast, we all know it, you know, you only live once. And this book makes us realize how fucking beautiful dance music is. Rutger, thank you so much for this. So I don't want to keep too much of your time. Uh, it's time for dancing really soon, because that's what we're here for. Enough with the talking, but before uh, I go, I have a special surprise for you. I want to ask your wife to come on stage with me. She has a very special message. Uh, naar de staan dan, hè? Ongelooflijk, joh. Echt fantastisch dat jullie allemaal zijn gekomen hier. Uh, ik wil het eventjes uh, voor één minuutje niet over je boek hebben. <laughs> ik wil het hebben over de jongen die ik ontmoette uh, als een skinny skateboarder. Sorry, trouwens, ik doe dit in het Nederlands hoor. Uh, ja, bedankt. Wat mijn voornemen met de Nederlands te doen, maar ik ga gewoon lekker door in het Nederlands. Dus, uh, maar uh, ja, de ranke jonge skateboarder die uh, zijn beste vriend Holp <laughs> met het opzetten van skateboardwinkel Lest in Rotterdam. En uh, no team, waar ben je? <applaus> Daar dus. Maar goed, uh, je maakt echt een bewuste keuze, keuze om uh, niet zakelijk uh, daarin te stappen. En uh, je bent ook begonnen met uh, economie te studeren aan de Erasmus Universiteit. Dat werd hem ook niet helemaal. Geswitcht naar bestuurskunde. En uh, bij afronding van je studie toch maar bedacht van uh, ik ga geen ambtenaar worden. Dus uh, Rutger, jij uh, hebt uh, uh, je hart gevolgd en je bent je passie achterna gegaan. En uh, je werd actiefotograaf. En uh, nou, dat heeft jou gemaakt tot, dan, tot de man die je nu bent. En de man, de lieve papa, waarvan we heel veel houden. Dus ik wil zeggen, laten we allemaal het glas hebben. Straks op jou. En many more years to come.